Are you ready, kids? No, I'm not ready. We don't have Nickelodeon. I can't hear you. We were too cheap to have good TV stations. I can't watch SpongeBob. C Captain! Captain! I I didn't grow up like the rest of you probably did. I didn't, we didn't have cable television or satellite TV in my house. We were cheap. We were frugal. My mom used to cut up old socks that we had too many holes in. She'd cut them up and then we'd use them as rags around our house. She would scrape the deodorant out of the deodorant container and then fuse them, melt them in the oven into one amalgamation of like 12 different deodorants. That's the kind of household I lived in. So you can bet your bottom dollar we didn't have cable TV. We didn't have Nickelodeon or Cartoon Network or Disney Channel or whatever. We just had whatever channels were floating around the airways that you could pick up for free. We had it rough in my day. Like I remember when TV universally switched to a digital signal and then anyone who didn't have satellite or cable had to switch and get a converter box. We doubled the amount of channels we had from like 13 to 26 and that was just We didn't even have a good TV to watch it on. Like I remember we had a TV that was still from the era where it was fashionable to have fake wood trim on the sides of your TV. And we had that thing for forever. And our TV got so bad towards the end that it'd go like fuzzy every 10 minutes and you'd have to whack the side, just boom, 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 until the picture would clear up. It was kind of like a family event when we'd watch TV because we'd take turns, we'd rotate who had to slap the TV every 10 minutes. But we would diligently do it because we wanted to keep watching great programs such as Arthur, the Aardvark, Clifford the Big Red Dog, Sid the Science Kid, oh my god, Caillou, Cyber Chaser, Zaboomafu, Zaboomafu. I feel like this video is gonna trigger like a core memory for about 50 people out there. And for the rest of you who don't know what I'm talking about, buckle up, cause it's about to get weird. But we kept ourselves busy with public television. That it was all we had back in the day. And some of it was weird, but some of it was actually pretty good. Like, let's talk about Caillou. Caillou was weird because they never really finished all of the animation. Like, each shot would have like, the middle of it would be fully animated and colored and everything, but then towards the edges of the screen, they just kind of blotted out with watercolor. Like, what? What? You, you, you didn't finish. You're not done! And so that gave it like this weird fever dreamy type feel. Like whenever I was watching it, it always felt like it was this own little like thought bubble. Cause it had like this weird cloudiness around the edges. I, I didn't feel good about Caillou. And then Caillou's voice was so annoying too. Like even as a young kid, I knew that wasn't real. Like they couldn't have gotten a better voice actor to do Caillou. Oh. Yes, daddy. But Caillou was weird. That's like a four out of 10 show for me. I didn't, I don't. No, I feel about Caillou. But speaking of lazy childhood cartoons, I remember the show Teletubbies. Like, Teletubbies is pretty infamous. And it was so lazy, too, because at some point during the episodes, they'd all have these screens on their bellies, and one of the Teletubbies would go, Oh, 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 And then they all go, ah, and then watch whatever happened on one of the Teletubby screens, because a video would appear there. And then after the clip was done playing, the Teletubbies would just go, ah, And then they would show it again. Like, what? That seems like a pretty cheap cop-out. And I remember they had a vacuum, Nunu. He was really weird. Nunu's whole thing is he just came on at random times and was go... <laughs> he made that weird noise. There was an episode of Teletubbies where Nunu came on and no joke, just sucked up custard all over the Teletubbies house for three minutes straight. Just three minutes of Nunu... <laughs> sucking up custard, and then he went to the door of the Teletubbies house, opened it, and then just farted all the custard out into bubbles into the Teletubby world? Like, what? Nunu kind of ruined my younger brother's childhood, honestly. He was terrified of vacuums. We used to all sleep in the family bed when we were, like, really little, and it would be, like, me and Thor, my younger brother, on either side of my dad, and Thor wouldn't even sleep on the edge of the bed because it was next to the closet, and he knew there was a vacuum in the closet, and he thought it was gonna come to life like Nunu in his sleep and come get him, so he had to sleep in the middle of the bed. Teletubbies was weird. It seems like kind of a cop-out. I didn't like the sun that was, like, the baby's face in it. It was like in a weird hobbit type village, like the Shire, but kind of futurized. They lived in like little homes in the hills and it, everything was just kind of off in Teletubbies. Teletubbies gets like a 2 out of 10. That show is weird. I also 
always loved in Zabumafu when Zabumafu would go over to that big vending machine with like all the nuts that he would eat because he's a lemur that's the whole thing is Zabumafu is a striped lemur and he had this big vending machine with all these like nuts and snacks and stuff and the two guys in Zabumafu would eat from it too because they were like two slots for human food or whatever it always looked so appetizing to me I wanted to eat out of the Zabumafu vending machine so bad in Zabumafu I never really knew what was going on that was kind of a confusing one for a kid because half the time they would use like the puppet lemur you know Zabumafu the striped lemur but then sometimes they would switch to like shots of an actual striped lemur and whenever they switched to the real striped lemur I'd always be like really confused and concerned like what is with Zabumafu mom mom Zabumafu is looking weird right now because you know the puppet Zabumafu was so much more animated and playful and fun as a kid when you saw the real animal it was like oh I don't like it's Boomafoo. <laughs> what is that name, too? It's a <laughs> I'm gonna name my kid Zaboomafu. Zaboomafu gets like a 6 out of 10. 6.7 out of 10 for Zaboomafu. But there are other great animal shows too, like Clifford the Big Red Dog. Dude, I love Clifford. Clifford was just like a really chill show. So like the whole premise of Clifford, if you haven't seen it, is it's just this dog. Like they got as a puppy, but Clifford never stopped growing until he got like 20 or 30 feet tall. But like imagine the nuisance that like a 30 foot tall dog would be clomping around the neighborhood just boom. So I remember they had to build this separate dog house outside the real house for Clifford to live in. And it was like super tall. And Emily Elizabeth was just like the main character as Clifford's caretaker. She had to build this big staircase to go all the way up to pet Clifford on top of the head. I like, I like Clifford. Clifford is 7 out of 10. But don't even get me started on Arthur, man. Arthur the Aardvark. Remember the theme song? Like, Every day when I walk down the street. Arthur is like one of the more fully realized cartoons on public television. It, it was pretty successful too. I think it had like eight or nine seasons too. I'm gonna look. What? 14 seasons? Arthur had 14 seasons. Also, did anyone else remember that really weird episode of Arthur where Arthur got really mad at DW because she broke his model plane and then he just hauled off and hit her? That's the episode where the Arthur angry fist meme comes from. There's a good reason, eh, General? No, D.W. I made it exactly right. What? <gasps> you built it all wrong. I told you not to touch it. <laughs> like, I remember watching that as a kid and being, like, disturbed by Arthur's dark side. That was, like, surprisingly dark for a kid's cartoon. But all that aside, Arthur was a great show. Arthur gets, like, an 8.2 out of 10. We're talking in the realm of public television cartoons, okay? Obviously, if you compare like most of these to SpongeBob, you can't compare Arthur to SpongeBob. Okay, maybe you can. Arthur was pretty good. Eight out of 10 for Arthur. Cyber Chase was weird. I never really knew what was going on in Cyber Chase either. That was one that I didn't really tune in for a whole lot. Like the whole premise of Cyber Chase was these kids got like sucked into a computer in the library and then they had to protect the computer from hackers. But Cyber Chase went on for 12 seasons also, and it had Gilbert Gottfried and Christopher Lloyd? <laughs> what? Like most people probably haven't even heard of Cyber Chase. It was a weird PBS show. Why did Christopher Lloyd agree to do this public television kids show? The kiddos are into computers nowadays. This is what they'll love. Christopher Lloyd is actually secretly Bernie Sanders. I am once again asking you to watch Cyber Chase. I didn't watch a whole lot of Cyber Chase, but I can appreciate its success. And it looked like a pretty well well-rounded kids cartoon, so 6.9 out of 10. Then also we had <laughs> Sid the Science Kid. I remember Sid the Science Kid was kind of like later in my childhood, so I didn't watch it a whole lot, but it was like this horribly animated, like super rudimentary graphics show. It, everyone would always like move around like real slowly. The budget for it was probably nothing. I remember though, Sid had this one friend, um, Gerald, I think. <laughs> yeah, and Gerald was a kindergartner, but he had the voice of like a smoker slash career alcoholic. Yeah, check out my moves. I'm a rock star. Gerald in the house. 
Sid would always be trying to do stuff like, I'm hypothesizing the duration of this caterpillar's cocoon time, or whatever, and then Gerald would be like, Hey Sid, watch me shove my whole fist down my throat. <laughs> hey Sid, your mom's looking pretty hot today. <laughs> he was, like, he was just this over-the-top kind of burnout kid, always derailing Sid's science. <laughs> Sid the Science Kid wasn't great. I, I mean, it only had two seasons. Terrible animation. <laughs> You can't stop me! Gerald had a lot of redeeming value, though. That show gets like a 4 out of 10 in my book. But, like, these public television shows were kind of the meat of what we had to watch at our house. I don't know. Times were tough at the Johnsons. But anyway, thanks for sticking around for the video. I hope you guys got a little glimpse of what it was like as a child at my house. It was rough for some of us! So when you go to bed at night, just be thankful that you were raised the way you were. Okay, bye. <laughs> I didn't see you there. Today's video is sponsored by Raycon. If you don't have Raycons already, I don't know what the- I don't know what you're doing! Get Raycon! Raycons are great because they're just as good as any other premium quality earbud, and they start at about half the price. And if you go to buyraycon.com slash Sven, you can get 15% off that! Their everyday E25 earbuds are the best model they've made so far with six hours of playtime in the earbuds, and then there's like an additional 24 hours of charge in the case. <laughs> What? And this new model has more bass than before, and it comes in a bunch of cool colors. I use my Raycons literally every single day, whether I'm at home or at work even. I can just pop my earbuds in and listen to my own music or podcast. They're so discreet. Another thing that I love about Raycons is that they're great at blocking out outside noise, so I can Sven. listen to my stuff in peace. Sven, you have jobs to do! So click the link in the description below to get 15% off your order. And this is the best way you guys can support the channel and support what I do. And you get a pair of earbuds, a banging pair of earbuds out of it. I appreciate you guys for sticking around and supporting the channel. So thank you so much. Love you. Bye. Despise all my time till I die. Don't know why I'm so tired to making my decisions based on you.